Daran, 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 Good evening, Internet. I'm here to talk to you about a problem, one that you most likely have. Maybe not you, but almost certainly you. I am talking about backing up your computer. According to a very unscientific survey I just researched by googling on my phone really fast, about 94% of PC owners do not back up their computer. Why? Why do people not back up their computer? I think that a lot of people, if they think about it, probably would want to back up their computer. They're like, OMG, what were to happen if my laptop were to melt in a fire, a burning blaze because an inferno occurred and there's a volcano erupting in my house? I just lost my laptop. OMG! Ignore my outrageous example for a moment. Let's just talk about backing things up. The first method of backup, and the one that I used when I first started backing things up, is what I call removable backup, or using... When I started, I actually used a blank CD and just burnt everything to a blank CD and then stored that blank CD in my CD collection. Uh, later on, it grew to a DVD. Today, it would probably be the equivalent of a flash drive. Backing things up to a flash drive sounds well and good, and it's definitely the cheapest of the options but not really the greatest of options. So there's a few problems when it comes to the idea of backing things up. There was the first set of problems I ran into when it came to backups. First off, this is easy to lose. So is a CD or DVD for that matter. If you lose this, you've lost your backups. Luckily, this is nowhere near as destroyable as a CD or DVD. My initial backup CDs were actually lost to rot. Literally, and since I lived in Florida, the CDs, the layers inside of the disc, little metal layers, the reason why if you microwave a CD it makes all those pretty designs, um, those metal layers actually rusted. There's definitely some advantages and disadvantages of this. The major, major advantage to using a flash drive is that it's cheap. This, this flash drive right here, cost me three US. Three US dollars. That's really small. I probably have more change than that in my couch for that matter. It, this is definitely the cheapest of the options. Cons. First off, this can run out of space. I cannot back up my things to this, personally. But that's because I have a lot of things that I back up, and I'll talk more about that later on when I go through the other options. Second off, you could lose this really easily. Um, I have only recently found all of my flash drives in the house. Plus, this can also get damaged pretty easily. I mean, it is a small piece of plastic with metal on a circuit board and a flash memory chip on the inside. Not exactly the most durable thing in the world, although this is definitely more durable than the old CDs and DVDs I used to use. Next off, this is most likely located inside of your house. Now, you can do this off-site. I doubt anybody who actually backs up to a flash drive normally does, but if, say for instance, my house were to be hit by a tornado, this is probably going to get destroyed, unless if I put this in like a fireproof and waterproof safe or things like that, and chances are I'm not going to do that unless if I'm a business. It's possible, but then you have to spend more money on the safe, for instance. Also, no versioning on this. If I decide to take a daily backup and I mess something up in one of my documents, save over it, and then back it up to this, I'm screwed. There's no way for me to easily recover. There's not really a way for me to go back. There's no versioning is what I'm referring to. Burgeoning. And, of course, the biggest drawback of all, you're not going to remember to actually back things up to this. I didn't. I mean, I did my yearly archive off of things. I did not back up on a regular basis. When I did eventually get a flash drive, I never used it for backups. At all. I'm terrible at remembering these things. Remember that for later. This isn't the greatest of solutions if you need to back up more than one computer. I, well, we'll cover that a bit later. My situation's a bit unique. My backup solution's not necessarily the greatest solution for everybody, but I think it's a reasonable solution. After I went through the phase of using removable media of some variety, uh, in my case it was DVDs, I decided to step up my game quite a bit. When I moved to Madison, I actually built my own file server, and I am going to do a YouTube video on building a file server later. When I built my file server, I oversized things a bit, and my file server was absolutely huge at the time. It's actually the same file server I use today, same capacity, same everything. One of the things I did, though, was that I bought a hard drive to back things up to. One of these. This is an internal hard drive, by the way. This is actually what they look like for people that aren't familiar with it or haven't watched any of my other YouTube videos. 
This one's a two terabyte internal hard drive. The one that I bought was one and a half terabytes and it's currently in use in a different computer. I bought an internal hard drive. This is actually how I used it. It was pretty awesome. I had a little dock thing for my computer. It was great. The dock has recently broken, but that's fine. Anyway, so what are some of the pros of using a hard drive? Well, first off, it's still somewhat cheap. If you need to back up a large quantity of information, this is basically your cheapest option. If you're trying to back up something like say, 200 or 300 gigabytes of data, you're probably not going to want a large flash drive to back things up on. That'd be really expensive. At that point, you might as well use option number three. It'd be quite a bit cheaper. In addition, a hard drive is usually somewhat portable, just like the flash drive. Uh, you can take it everywhere if you want. You can put it in a safe if you want to. If you're being really paranoid, you can even buy multiple removable hard drives and just rotate through them every so often. That way you have a backup every three months rather than every month and overwriting it repeatedly. Unfortunately, there's still a lot of problems with the personal hard drive approach. Namely, you still don't have versioning. So that document that you decided that that document that your cat decided to go you know, rest on top of the keyboard and delete all the information and save it, yeah, it's still gone. You're not going to be able to do much about it until you discover it, and then by then it's probably too late and you've already backed up on top of it. Second off, you still have a pretty limited capacity. Even this two terabyte hard drive here is actually not enough for me to back up my computers at this point. I'm using slightly over two terabytes of hard drive space for my backup. Surprise! I will admit, however, most people watching this probably aren't using that much space for backing things up, but... 1080p 60 frame per second videos are huge, huge. If you do end up going over on capacity, chances are it's going to cost you a lot of money. I mean, yeah, I bought my terabyte and a half hard drive a long time ago, and at the time that I bought it, I wasn't even filling up half of it for my backups, but that quickly changed, and it's definitely changing today. I'm saving an extra 200 to 300 gig of data per week that I vlog. There's still the same problem that you had with the flash drive, namely, you're not going to remember to back these things up. I didn't. I was steadfast. I set a reminder once a month that I would back things up to this drive. I even had a system. I had a program that would automatically sync things. It worked great for the first four months that I did this, and then I forgot from then on. Yep. Luckily, in my case, I've never actually suffered a problem due to my backups. I'm reasonably good at keeping my hardware stable and things like that. Option number three. This is an option that I can't show you myself because I don't exactly have this as an option myself, but I am talking about a NAS or network attached storage. I have a friend that's doing this right now and it's working out really well for him. And this is probably what I'd recommend a lot of people do depending on their situation. Basically, you have some type of appliance that acts as a file server. And what you do is that you back up all of your computers to that file server. So you have the information on both your computer and the file server. A lot of NASs, even the mid-grade consumer ones, have versioning. What this means is that if your cat decides to sleep on the keyboard and saves a document on top of itself, you'll have both the old version and new version for at least a period of time. That's really, really handy. You have no idea how handy that is. To be honest, every time that I've personally needed to restore from backup is because of something that I screwed up or my cats, or user error of some variety, basically. Another pro, you can use that NAS to back up multiple computers. All of these other options can theoretically be done with multiple computers, but it's really labor-intensive, time-consuming, and not really all that great of an idea. In this case, though, you can actually use some automated agents to back up every computer in your house to the same NAS, and that is awesome. You can automate this. Since the NAS is permanently attached to some place on your home network, so either a wireless NAS, I think Apple calls them time machines, or a wired NAS, which are pretty much available at every tech store, even Target and Walmart sell them now, it's pretty common, not to mention online, of course. They're pretty much everywhere, and it's pretty easy to set up. I think my friend, it took him all of like an hour to set it up at most. And that's just because he was probably fiddling around with all the settings. This first problem is probably not something that's not that concerning to you, but for somebody who lived in the path of lots and lots of hurricanes, it is a little more concerning to me, which is your NAS is still in your house. That proverbial tornado or hurricane or firestorm or volcano that might hit your house is going to take out your NAS. Most likely you can't put this in a waterproof or fireproof safe because it needs to operate still and Wi-Fi doesn't go through that much metal very well, by the way. So this data is 
backed up but not necessarily protected from things that might happen to your house. That might be acceptable to you, and it's probably acceptable to a lot of people, but I'm a little paranoid when it comes to that. That's not really all that great of an idea to me. Second off, it costs money. This is the most expensive of the options that I've mentioned so far. Uh, you're looking to spend, at least in the US, probably about 100 to 150 US minimum, depending on how much you need to back up, what fancy features you want, whether you want versioning, which you want versioning. Um, you can replicate some of these features in software. That means that you have to install a beefier client on all of your machines and stuff like that, and it's possible to work around that, but it's still not exactly going to be cheap. Especially if you run out of space on that NAS and have to buy a new one, which means now you need to go replicate all of that data again. This is going to take a lot of time to set up, it's going to take a lot of time to back up. It's not necessarily the greatest of options if you have large amounts of data. Like me! Final option are what are called cloud-based backup solutions. The cloud. I hate using marketing buzzwords. The cloud is a concept that a lot of people want you to buy into, but it's basically you using other people's surfers to do things. That's a nice general and very brief description of what I'm talking about when it comes to the cloud. In this case, I'm referring to services like CrashPlan, or even Dropbox, or Spider Oak, or... Google Drive, or any service that gives you some online storage. The idea being is that you upload your backups to the cloud, and they host it for you. If you're backing up small amounts of data, this probably works really great, because you can use a lot of free services like Dropbox or Spider Oak or lots of those things like that. Uh, many of them have versioning. They are backed up outside of your house. You can use some type of automated application to be able to back up to those services. You don't need to pay attention to it. It works out really well. In my case, I use CrashPlan. Uh, CrashPlan is great. I actually have all of my computers backing up to one computer, and that one computer being backed up to the cloud. That way, if one of my other computers were to fail, I would have a pretty quick restore time, because I'm still inside of my house, still inside of my own personal network. And if my file server were to fail, well, I can go re-download everything. In my case, CrashPlan also happens to offer a plan that has a limited amount of storage. My file server is currently using up a little bit over 2 terabytes of storage that I'm backing up. It's actually using up more than that, I'm just not backing everything up out of it. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff, and if I were to go with a plan like Dropbox, that would probably cost me dozens of dollars per month. That's kind of on the pricey side, and I don't particularly want to spend that. I'm not necessarily saying Crash Plan is the be-all, end-all of things or stuff like that. Really need to weigh the pros and cons for your particular option. Speaking of, pros. Pro, automated services work. Pro, you can back up multiple computers at the same time with absolutely no problems, no drawbacks, nothing. Pro, you can expand what you can back up on the fly. You don't have to wait to buy a new hard drive, you don't have to copy things over again, you don't need to reinvest with a capital investment, you don't need another flash drive, you can just do it. And if you go over your limit, you can just pay a little bit more money and it will instantly work. Cons. Price. Unless if you're backing up small amounts of data, which you would back up with a flash drive, for instance, this isn't going to be cheap. Uh, CrashPlan costs about $60 a year, if I remember right. I know CrashPlan costs about $4 a month if you pay four years in advance, but let's be honest, most people aren't going to pay four years in advance. Con. The services can go away. If, say, for instance, CrashPlan decided to close up shop today, I am without recourse. I can probably do a small claims to get my money back for the time that I've already spent for future stuff, but they can close up shop at any time. So, what do you want to look for in a backup plan? First off, how good are you at actually remembering to back things up? If you are the type of person that always remembers everything, always, no matter what, one, can I meet you? Because I've never met somebody like that before in my life. You're probably better off with something like this. Simple flash drive. Or this, a large hard drive, depending on your situation. If you need to back up a small amount of data, flash drive. Large amount of data, hard drive. If you're human like the rest of us, chances are you're not going to remember these things. And as a result, you want some type of automated service. My recommendations at that point would be a NAS or networked attached storage, or alternately, cloud-based storage. 
You can automate both of those because they're always connected in some manner, unless if you have unstable internet access. You have unstable internet access, your options are pretty much a NAS and nothing else at that point. You need something that's constantly on and constantly connected. You might be able to get away with a hard drive if you only have one computer, but if something were to happen to your computer and fry it, chances are you're frying your backup as well. It's not the greatest of ideas. My recommendation would be using a NAS at that point. If you don't have stable internet access or you don't want to deal with a monthly fee and have a large amount of data to store. If you have a small amount of data to store or alternately a large amount of data to store and you don't mind a monthly or yearly fee, cloud-based backup is probably your best option. You can automate it, it will automatically work, you don't need to worry about it, and it will still be there. Even if a, even if Godzilla were to stomp through this house right now, my backups are safe. So yeah, back your stuff up. It's important. In this case, you can't even throw in a fireplace safe, most likely. Fireplace safe? That'd be the worst safe ever! <laughs>